Today I'm going to take a look at two scooters that I think do really well at challenging the popular M365 and ES2. Welcome back to another episode of Studio Reviews. So who is Reed? Well, Reed is a company founded in 2008 that focused predominantly on bicycles. Now last year in 2019 they launched their e-range and as part of that, I've got two scooters today in the studio to test out for you. So let me introduce you to the Reed E4 and E4 Plus. In the past 12 years since Reed began business, the personal transport industry has changed dramatically. Now personal light electric vehicles are commonplace and are popular choices over more traditionally man-powered options, which is why Reed have decided now is the time to electrify. Enter the E4 and E4 Plus, Reed's answer to the electric scooter takeover. Starting with the E4, it has 8.5 inch non-pneumatic wheels with a 250 watt single motor on the front. It has a Tesla-esque style HUD up top which controls three speed settings up to a top speed of 15 miles per hour to a maximum distance of 17 miles. The E4 Plus has 10 inch non-pneumatic wheels and also features a single motor on the front but a total power of 350 watt. It has a few other nice improvements over the standard model that I'll get into shortly but a nice touch on both is the addition of colour changing front light and an underglow on both. So now that the specs are out of the way let's dive into a ride test and tell you my thoughts on how I think they perform. So, the E4, the Reed E4, what have I got to say about this scooter? Well, first of all, let's get this out of the way. It is so very, very similar to the M365. I mean, the entire bottom plate build is nearly identical in every single way, except for a few different things. First of all, the tyres. Let's start with the tyres. They're a little bit different. They're not filled with air like on the M365 and therefore they're not prone to punctures. These are non-pneumatic tyres, so they're basically solid with a bit of a hollow that runs all the way through. So you have got a bit of uh, squidginess, but not as much, obviously, as you would have on a M365, but also not quite as solid as something like the ES2, which has completely solid tyres. So these are a good compromise between not having punctures and also comfort that's what i think anyway alongside this another bit of a difference is the mechanism at the front now i don't know if you remember that jamie recalled nearly 10,000 of these scooters because of a fault with the mechanism at the front where it folds that to me is terrifying because it meant that actually a lot of the scooters were defective and could cause injury when using them. Well, it looks to me like they've updated this on the Reed E4 to something a bit stronger. So they've certainly taken design cues, but then implemented a better choice, which is obviously very, very welcome indeed. But the biggest difference here between this and the Xiaomi M365 is the HUD. The HUD is vastly different. I mean, on the M365, you've got four LED dots. This has a full-on display with the speed and your gearing and your battery and it's overall quite nice. I mean, I can see it. It's very, very bright at the moment out, but I can see it quite clearly. Handlebars are a little bit low for me, although I am six foot eight, so that's forgiven a little bit. So I do have to bend back a little bit just to see that display. Now, the top speed of this is currently 15 mile per hour, which is what I'm doing now. And it's very, very consistent with that, but it's on a 250 watt motor, which isn't the most powerful motor you'll ever find on a scooter. And that means that one, it's not gonna be that good for pulling you uphill, especially if you're like me and are on the upper limits of what these things can actually carry. I mean, I'm 100 kilograms, so that's always gonna have a bit of an effect. As well, the acceleration of a 250 watt motor is not the best. Uh, you know, if you're accelerating from standing, it's going to take a little bit longer to get to top speed than something with a stronger motor. But overall, the design of this, so similar to the M365, which is good because the M365 was a staple dietary requirement for electric scooters. I use the M365 as a base for everything. And with the fact that this has some updates to it, 
I just think that actually this is a good scooter that they've obviously looked at the M365, looked at the formula and perfected the formula or certainly improved on that formula anyway because it's got all of the things that were on my wish list for the M365. The better display, it's got a more reliable folding mechanism, the lights are bigger and you can change colour of those lights too. So I just think to me the E4 is a really nice little update in respect to something like the M365. So if you're coming from the M365, this will be a nice little update for you. But I wouldn't say it's necessarily an upgrade because the capabilities, the base capabilities are very similar. Very, very similar. And I don't think you'll notice too much of a difference in terms of how it feels when you're riding it. But, but, and here is the big but, you're not gonna get a puncher. And that, to me, is worth buying the E4 over the M365 any day, without a doubt. But, if you wanted to go for something that is a little bit stronger in terms of its power, a little more powerful, then you probably want to take a look at the Reed E4 Plus. This is big brother, the E4 Plus. Now, this really is a plus-size scooter for the plus-size people, because... It's got a much better motor, which is 350 watts. So for accelerating, for climbing uphill, this thing is much more suitable, especially for people who are on the heavier side like myself. And in fact, I'm not going to just go with that. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is, and I'm going to do a little bit of a drag race between the two so you can see the difference in acceleration that the 250 versus the 350 watt makes. I'm here on the 250 watt E4 and Ryan is on the 350 watt E4 Plus. You're about to see how much difference it makes. Straight away Ryan starts to pull ahead with that extra power straight from the start. Because they've got the same top speed however, once you're at that it's all about aerodynamics. Making myself smaller and more streamlined means I can catch him up quite easily, although not necessarily if he did the same. Now, back to the ride test of the E4 Plus. Another thing that I love about this scooter is the fact it's got suspension. I mean, a lot of the design is very similar to the E4, but it has suspension. Very, very, very similar to the ES2 in the sense of it's kind of right just in front of the back wheel. But unlike the ES2, it doesn't make any squeaky noises, so I can bounce all day and there'd be no squeaking at all, which is a phenomenal change from the ES2. If anything, this feels like the secret love child of the Xiaomi M365 and the ES2, except it's come back for its revenge after being abandoned in a cave when it was just five years old. Anyway, other than the suspension, the design is rather similar to the standard model, although it does have a manual brake on the back, so the bumper can be pressed down and you can use that as a brake instead of having to use all the uh, regular braking up here. Now that's nice because it's just an extra bit of an emergency brake that you can slam your foot on if you need to. Plus marks there for safety. As well, I think this might feel a little bit bigger could be my imagination. I'll narrate over this now after I've checked the actual stats of the height of the stem, but it does feel like it's taller. It does indeed have a slightly taller stem at around an inch more from the foot plate to the top of the stem. Could be my imagination. Anyway, overall this is definitely a welcome increase on the standard model because it's got some of the pro features you expect from better scooters. It's got a more powerful motor, 10 inch wheels as well, which obviously a lot of people prefer over the standard 8 inch on a lot of the regular scooters. It just makes the ride much smoother with that suspension as well. Oh, and another thing, the locking mechanism is yet again upgraded. However, it's different from the standard model. Oh, it's a rabbit. There's something in my helmet as well. I'm gonna have to get it out. Oh, it's a bug. Whilst I try and stop the bug from entering my brain through my ear, I want to take this moment to make a quick service announcement. Wear a helmet. If you don't, I'll summon demons to haunt you in your sleep. That was quite horrible. Where was I? 
Oh yes, the stem. The stem is uh, evolved slightly more than the standard model in the sense they've actually replaced the mechanism to something that I prefer. It's like a great big flappy paddle with a kind of clicky bit of a mechanism there. It feels nicer, but long term, don't know how that will stand up because um, obviously given time, given it extended usage, it may decide to back up sooner than the regular style on the M365 and, in this case, the E4 as well. So I don't know, but I guess we'll see. Right, coming up to a bit of a hill here. As you can see, it's still pulling me up. God, it's a sunny day today. Jesus. That sun's going to blow up, isn't it? It is 2020. That sun is going to blow up and a dinosaur is going to come over that hedge and eat me. And then a bigger dinosaur is going to come and eat that. And then a meteorite. And then aliens and then the Illuminati and then 5G who will burn everything <sighs> so again my thoughts on this particular scooter is it's a very nice ride indeed it's very smooth those tyres do mean that it's never going to get a puncher which is amazing and that suspension is very nice as well it feels like a big boy nice big tall great grips as well really nice grips overall i'm actually very impressed with this scooter and i think it's rather a good commuter's device so now we're back in the studio it's perfect time to talk about the two things that i would love to see improvement in the e4 range in potential future models now the first is the battery life very much like the m365 and the es2 the e4 and e4 plus are very light but consequently it's a trade-off because that means that you're not going to have a gigantic battery in Reads say that you can get 17 miles out of a full charge on the E4 Plus. Well, with myself being 100 kilograms and living in the middle of nowhere in Wales, there's lots of hills, so it's never ideal conditions. Now, that 17 miles is always based on ideal conditions with a user who is of a more average weight, not 100 kilograms, on the upper limits of what these scooters can carry. But with my weight and with the area that I live, I could only push about 10 miles out of a full charge on full gear, which, to be honest, isn't that bad, and it's very, very comparative to both the M365 and ES2 again. So, actually... Although you might not get the total amount of range out of the E4 Plus or the E4 as well, you're still going to get quite a respectable distance out of it if you are heavier like me. The second thing I'd like to see is the way you change the lights in the app. Although you can change the front light in the app to a different variety of colours, you can't change the underglow as far as I'm aware. That just cycles in between all the different colours, which is fine, it's not a problem, but it would have been nice to be able to change that to something like green to match the front light. Now let's look at the price of both of these scooters. The E4 standard sits at around £450 online in various different places. Now that to me fits in pretty reasonable levels compared to other scooters of similar capabilities. But the E4 Plus is what's special because that sits at just £550 or potentially even a little bit less if you do some digging. That's a cracking number. In my eyes, it's an absolute bargain. The E4 Plus is definitely my choice between the two. For less than £100 more, you can get a motor that's stronger, a taller build for taller people, extra braking capabilities, and overall a smoother ride with suspension and 10-inch wheels. That to me is a steal, and it sets it way above scooters such as the M365 and ES2. But I mean what I said. It really does feel like a hybrid of the two, with the best of both combined to make a scooter that's quite the pleasure to drive. And I have to say that actually, Reed have done a pretty good job with these two little scooters. So they are the Reed E4 and E4 Plus. And I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and found something of use to you and maybe even helped you decide whether or not the Reed E range is the scooter type for you. And if you have found it helpful, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to find more scooter reviews on here when they land. But other than that, guys, thank you very much for joining and I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.